Welcome back, everybody. That was fantastic, Hex. Getting to watch the reactions and the comms of the players. I love it. Yeah, there's uh, so there's some talk from San Francisco. Dude, I, I love that no attitude. Surprise. Super Any, and Sinatra, yeah. come on. I'm Any, a fan now. I was the one who, before. Anyone who watches their streams personally knows that's exactly how they are. It's, it's just who they are in game, out of game, whatever. Oh, so uh, they're fantastic. But also the Titans. I mean, I love it. You know, getting it, that yeah. window of insight into the comms of the players. Excellent stuff. Hope you guys watch it. Otherwise, you know, check out the YouTube. Check it out there. Well, now we're going to get going French for a second there. Now we're going to go into <laughs> our third match of the day because we have uh, two more coming at you. This is the next one. Gongju Charge versus the San Francisco Shock. And, you know, San Francisco Shock, we're going to get to see Super and Sinatra in action. Yeah, it's it's a repeat of what we had last week. San Francisco is one of my favorite teams because they don't really let their foot off the gas. There's some teams at the very top who you consider Vancouver and NYXL who just, you know, they get to map four, they're up 3-0, they take their foot up a little gas. Vancouver on Rialto is a prime example. They kind of just do whatever. Yeah. San Francisco's like, we got stuff to do. Let's go home. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm done with this match. These kids aren't on our same level. Let's go. So Guangzhou is not going to get a softball from San Francisco. And I said this before when they, before they previously played. I don't expect Guangzhou to win. But if they can be competitive with one of the best teams in the league, then there's signs of life there. Guangzhou has been hindered by a brutal schedule. Stage one, they played Vancouver twice. Now they get San Francisco shocked twice in stage two, two of the best teams in the league. Mm -hmm. So would you see this as a situation in terms of like quality loss if it goes down that way? If they go to five and they lose, quality loss for sure. Well, there we go. We're gonna find out if they're capable because we're gonna get the first team out on the stage and that is going to be the Guangzhou Charge. Guangzhou is going to try to pull a Hangzhou, if you will, and take an upset against a team that everyone predicts a little bit better. Need to right the ship here. A young team needs to get their confidence back. What stood out to me in their last match against San Francisco is they just looked a little bit tentative and passive. And San Francisco is the worst possible team to play tentative against because they're coming at you. They're playing aggressive. I think that Guangzhou would be best served not to try to play 3-3 against them, maybe mix in a little bit of Sombra. Eileen generally plays that, Cable will also play that too. They're both in the lineup in the starting six. Yeah, to kick things off, and my boy Hoppa is here. Hopefully we'll get to see some Farah. All right, and I can get hype and lose my voice. Let's get their opponents out on the stage. It's going to be the San Francisco Shock. Who's leading it? Who's leading it? The suspense is killing me! It, uh, it's Moth, but he was just drawn by the lights. <laughs> but he's walking through it. I mean, the big stage. <laughs> there there you come go. Out. You see Sinatra there towards the end. Moth has... I, look, it's a hard team to talk about who the best player on the team is. We give so much attention to Super and Sinatra, rightfully so. We got guys like Rascal. Choi Hyobin has had a breakout year, I think. I don't think anyone expected the performance to get out of him. You had a new player like Violet. Moth, I thought, was their best player in the Stage 1 playoffs. So across the board, just guys who pretty much all should be making all-star teams. Yeah, and with a winning attitude, as you guys heard it. You know, when we get that window of insight into the comms like that, you get to really know the players. Sinatra Super, I mean, that's what they're all about. They're just like, we are the best on the server. You have to yeah. have that attitude if you're going to go far in competition. So excited to see some more action, especially from this guy here, Rascal. Yeah, aside from just being a great head of hair, Rascal is widely lauded as a prodigy throughout the Overwatch League as someone who can pick up new heroes. Just so happens we have a brand new hero in stage two. It is Batiste, who's kind of a support, flex support kind of player. So Rascal was playing the Brigida earlier. He really seems to understand Batiste. Batiste is all about not blowing up your cooldowns. Those are enormous cooldowns on his abilities. In, uh, in Vulnerability Matrix, or Immortality Matrix rather, 20 second cooldown, his regenerative healing burst, 15 second cooldown, and then other than that, you just have grenades and you've just got bullets. That, the ult usage has been good too, so Rascal's a guy to watch. Yeah, we're gonna be excited to see if he decides to play quite a bit of Batiste today. Let's take a look at the maps presented by Toyota. Oasis is gonna be kicking us off. So who's gonna play in traffic today, X? Well, hopefully nobody. No one likes to see <laughs> someone get hit by the cars unless it's D.Va. It's actually really funny when that happens. Uh, I think this actually is okay for Guangzhou. I don't want them to play 3-3 into San Francisco. It's a recipe for death. You're not as good at 3-3 in San Francisco, and that's okay. You're good at other things. Play some DPS, mix it up, get a little bit wacky, maybe try a Bastion, try some different things. But I think playing your opponent's best game is a recipe for disaster, as we see when teams try to out Chengdu Chengdu. Just play what you're good <laughs> at. Good don't, don't try to play the other team's game. Nobody can outdo, outdo and out Chengdu Chengdu. Five. So, let's get into it. Countdown is over, and we're gonna get into our first control point battle. Best of three here. 
Okay. And First to two. Mirror matchup, aside for Violet, is going to play the Moira. The reason a lot of teams like to play Moira on this map is maybe anticipating a higher DPS composition. Also, if you want to stick with it, you can usually get Coalescence up first, and that could win you a first fight. But they see that there is no DPS composition on the other side, so they're going to make changes. We have a Reinhardt 3-3 three, three on one side and a Winston 3-3 three, three on the other. No messing around here. I like that. No lack of hesitation on the side of Super. He's going to know what the call needs to be, and they get right back onto the point just in time to contest. And so the charge will not be getting it for free. Hatha dancing in the back line in position with the D-Matrix to negate projectiles and keep his team safe. And well, it's going to be just like that. Snuck it! San Francisco Shock getting first control. It's one of my biggest pet peeves in all of Overwatch, giving up first control for free. Now, all during this fight, San Francisco is going to have control of the point and counting up. All it was going to take is a toe touch from someone to get on the point and stop that happening. Meanwhile, 15% and no one's even died yet. Yeah, and I'm excited to keep an eye on Sinatra as well when it comes to Zarya play. He is definitely one of the very best in the league. The numbers he pumps out Super are ridiculous. Solo. But we lose Super in the mix. Right back at it though, Shu goes down. So it's one for one. You don't have the tank on the side of the shock. And the rally getting thrown in here by Kiv. The Charger looking to capitalize on the fact that the main tank isn't here, but Sinatra doesn't care. Throws a grab right into it. No follow up really, although Rascal does find Kiv, but. Sinatra doesn't care, nor yeah. does Guangzhou right there. Nothing really comes of it. Kiv does go down. He got that very early rally. Now Rascal's got one answer of his own, and the online's cut, or ultimates come online for the shock. But we've seen this from the Shock in the past. Sinatra, he gets grabbed so fast, so matter, quickly. Yeah. He is one of those guys with the hair trigger. He'll just throw it out there, because he knows, hey, in 59 seconds average, I'll have another one. It'll yeah. be fine. It's, it's why I never really mock whatever Sinatra does with grab. It's like, it, it doesn't matter. He gets them up like they're on cooldown. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's bonkers. In comparison, Eileen is sitting at a minute 43 average grab. Yeah, it's almost so, double. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Sinatra, he's fast. Yeah, look at it. It's, he's already at 80 again for another grab, ready to go. <laughs> It's unreal. Hotbo with the deep SD, and it's not going to find anything. Shu decides to go ahead and commit with the trance, wanting to keep his fight. up. San Francisco should just chill and then throw in the grab and win this fight. Yep, and that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going ahead and push forward. Sinatra's going to get that grab online in a moment. There it is, sure enough, instantly at their feet, looking for the follow up, and they're all dropping solo on the charges side. Oh, it's like you're reading sheet music or something, Hex. You just see the next notes coming down the line. You just know what's happening here. The shock are monsters. <laughs> San Francisco's not the, the... San Francisco plays power chords, brother. <laughs> there it's, you go. It's not super complicated. They're going to rush at you. They're going to swing hammers. They're going to just do things better than you can do them. And that is how San Francisco's been playing. You know, Jimmy or something. Just... Oh, no, this is this is Chuck Metal. This, there we go. <laughs> this, uh, this. Never mind. <laughs> Hey, Fine. I, I happen to like it, so so I'm all for it. But that was, uh, yeah, that's that's how San Francisco versus Guangzhou has been going lately. Guangzhou has got to find a way to just kind of win a map, get some confidence, win a fight. I think. See, what you would say is you don't want to run three-three against San Francisco because they're better at it. That's fine. They're just better at it. But you also really can't run a Sombra into San Francisco because Sombras aren't as good against super aggressive. 3-3 teams. They're better against passive 3-3 three, three teams that you can pick the fights, but San Francisco, they're coming at you. What are you going to do to stop it? Uh, just a barrel of pain rolling on down, and now we move into the second point. So San Francisco Shock in the lead in the series now. 1-0 versus Charge, and as far as the Charge are concerned, they are at least stomping forward. They are sh not showing fear and playing passively. They are trying to take the fight to the Shock. Super, more than happy to apply. Into the hole! Oh, let's go! <laughs> Rio. To see that I don't have anything to do with this. It's like, nope, not no. having it. Would you want to duel Super in a hammer fight? I would not. Sinatra takes on the first go, but then he gives his life for it. Shu, an early Rookie of the Year candidate, does come in and takes down Sinatra. So a small window here for Guangzhou, as they don't give up capture for free, thank goodness. Yes, they are staying on it this time around. Two options. Rio I taken in, and yep, they are going to get this fight. Sinatra just did not expect Rio to be coming up at that time. He got charged in the back, had no idea where Rio yeah. was coming from. And that's pretty much going to spin it all out. Because you lose Sinatra, you're, you're losing so much damage. Yeah, Rio has had a couple of off weeks, in my opinion. He was a, a real standout for me early in Stage 1 because he was playing Winston well and Hammond well and Reinhardt well, which is very rare at this level of competition. But lately, he's been playing a lot of Reinhardt, maybe just trying to get his groove on it. Oh, Craftsman in the corner, hoping that his shield lasts a little while longer here is Rio. Eventually, they are going to have to decide when's the fight coming through. Rascal decides oh, now. Let's go. There's the rally and the instant collapse on Rio. He gets deleted. 
and Shu has used his trance. That's gonna set it up once again for Sinatra in the next fight. The grab is gonna murder him. And was that a collapse or was that Rio just jumping in kind of alone? Yeah, he got a bubble, but that bubble doesn't last forever. Kind of put himself out in no man's land in San Francisco. They're not a team that's not gonna capitalize on a mistake like that. They take down Rio instantly. Oh, brutal. Uh, let's see, Charge, they have some tools to work with. Exactly, thank you, Tony. We've got uh, the ults online here for the Charge. Not like they don't have anything in the bank. Charles gonna get that sound barrier soon. And that could be used to counter out Sinatra. There is a, still a window here, a minor one, but, and there it is. Sinatra decides, now or never, let's go. If they can take out Rio here, and it's looking like it's gonna happen. No Rio means that the Charge now don't have a tank to hide behind. Uh, and the tragedy is that they ended up using Sound Barrier during that too, after Rio died. So they're going to all have to retreat and just watch their shields dissipate with no effect on them. Now San Francisco, an aggressive team. They've also got a bit of that selfless streak in them. The connection is there. So they're going to hold as close to spawn as possible. Uh, just, it's, just the energy is still up on Sinatra. So you're still trying to just beat your head up against a wall, hoping that it's going to break. Let's say Violet in the back line. Keep in positioning. He knows that he just needs to play so that he does not get caught out. He's got that trance. So if Violet decides to get the grab in here, he's going to be ready for it. Once again, Shu decides to get the grab going. Self-destruct, nothing from it. Eileen now with a late grab, but the sound barrier is up. And there's still the trance if they need it, but San Francisco, they don't. Now they're going to live through this. And since Transcendence was preemptively used by Shu, at the moment they even come near the points, Notch is just going to grab them. That's going to be the fight, the point, the map. Oh, it's all just panning out so nicely. Oh, hey, guess what? Hey, Eileen. Surprise, surprise. He'll go for the solo, and that's got to set it up for the rest to fall as well. Charge just getting overwhelmed. Shock. They're just doing work. These transcendence timings from Shu are a little bit questionable. I feel like he, he thinks there's so much pressure on him to carry this team and keep his team alive. But using a Transcendence before the Graviton comes out means that you're probably going to lose to Graviton. Yes. It's just a very simple equation. It's the primary answer to it. Violet. Doomfist. Gonna find it. Yep. Now we're just trying to change it up. There's a kitchen sink <laughs> called Doomfist. And it's on his way. It goes straight into Super. Gets stunned immediately. Deleted. All over but the crying as Toyobi cleans up. Shu with the Transcendence and the saddest song in the world. They can push out the point. San Francisco will take a very decisive map number one over the Guangzhou Charge. Now looking so confident on that side of the stage right now. Did we win? Did we win? Of course we won. Of course we won. <laughs> there you have it. The Shock take the lead of the series. One to zero over the Charge. And we'll see what's going to happen next after the break. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Welcome back from the break, ladies and gentlemen. And 
here is Violet on your screen. We've been doing a lot of talking about Super and Sinatra and Moth, but Violet happens to be here as well, Hex, and he's doing a lot of work. I think he evolved with his team throughout stage one. Early times, he was peeking a little bit too, bit, too much. You have to kind of learn how Super likes to use the shield and when he doesn't like to use the shield, so Violet got caught out a couple times. For the last three or four weeks, he's been on an absolute terror. He's getting Transcendence up every 49 seconds in the last map. Which is pretty quick. <laughs> which is pretty quick. Yeah, Shu was doing 112, which is fine. He just had to use him in opportune times. But Violet has been a piece that this team has needed. He seems to have evolved along with the team through Stage 1. Look, this team wasn't undefeated in Stage 1 like some of the other Goliaths. But they started getting better and better. And they came together as a team. Violet's a big part of that. Shu, I thought, was a hard carry for this team in many maps early in yes, the year for Guangzhou. Year, exactly. Lately, it just feels like he's trying to do so much. His team gets too low, so he's, I have to transcend or we're going to lose the fight. Problem is, you transcendence, and you lose the next fight. It's just delaying the inevitable, so they need to figure that out. We are going to Paris, though. Our newest map here in the Overwatch League. A lot of different styles, strategies. When San Francisco is on defense, I would not be surprised to see some Batiste come out. It has been the Rascal Special. But so far, we have Guangzhou on defense. Doesn't look like they want to try anything too out of the ordinary. They've got an Ana. She was actually a great Ana. And then they're going to run a Winston defense. We saw this type of style from the Valiant earlier. So I'll be sure, guys, to check out the all-star vote that's going on right now. Take part in it. It was on the lower third there for just a moment. But uh, be sure to get your vote in to get the favorite player or your favorite player. The player, the player that you honestly think deserves to be there. Yeah, vote. That's, that's coming up soon. It's coming up soon at the end of the stage. Yep. 15th and 16th of May. I know that because I have plans for the 17th. Just saying. <laughs> yes, I'll be on a plane back to Sweden. All right, they're coming out now. Rascal is on the offensive, Batiste. Really has great faith in this hero. It buys you the extra second you need. Pumps out a lot of healing. Also, Rascal's a former DPS player. He can hit some headshots. Yeah, he's got aim. He's actually got aim. And so you put the hand, I mean, the, the thing with Batiste is that if you've got aim and you're hitting headshots, you can do some damage with yeah. him. You're not messing around, so. Good to see that Rascal's adapt to, adapting to him so quickly. It's also a, a very strange gun to fire. This is triple burst and it's got this recoil, so you really have to get used to it. I think the more time you play on it, the better you're gonna get at it. It's already got ultimate up. Window pane comes down, amplifies healing and damage. Everything is there, setting it up perfectly. And now what do you do if you're the charge? If you show yourself you've got a fully charged Sinatra, he's gonna melt your face. 200% damage and then some. Well, let's go. Already progress for the Shock. Nearly two ticks on the board for them. That idea frustrates Rio, and so he decides to get pretty angry about it and start punching people in the face. Sinatra throws the grab down, but it's Eileen to find Violet. There's the kill. Choyova comes right back, though, so it's tit for tat so far. Grab didn't get much right now, though. Rio is completely separated from his team. He's going to have to jump back, get some nice heals on the way in. This one is scrappy as can be. It's just a brawl. Everyone getting low. Eileen channeling his inner Sinatra. Just goes for the grab, they're gonna lose Chara. Moth gets felted though, and that's not gonna help. Yeah, I felt that he could have gotten that kill without even using the grab, and then they use the grab and don't get the kill anyway. But now, still, it's charging in control at this point. San Francisco's got a lot of people alive though, they've got five on the point. Now they're getting the reinforcement, Lucio coming back, another ult from Rascal. Yes, and so we will be able to get that going. And they've nearly got it unlocked. Now this has been just the longest fight going on between these two teams. Somehow, still in it. Eileen, though, that's the big damage gone. But then Sinatra, it actually happened. Hoppa and Aiden ate a grab. Might Hoppa. actually make all the difference here. Friend on his former team. Hoppa's been a standout player for the charge. Great veteran acquisition, but Choi Hyobin took Hoppa's spot, took his job, took his life. Big self-destruct over top. San Francisco looking to snowball this one. Yeah, they're just high tailing it straight in. Rascals nearly got another ult online already. And so, right on to the point. No time wasted. Charge for themselves. We've got Rio changing it up. He's now going to be on the Rhine. And we will have Kib just leading the way here with the rally, trying to get his teammates into the fight and give them a bit of armor to make them tougher to take down. San Francisco going to disengage off that rally. Drop the amplification matrix down in front there. That's why we call it the window. Amplification matrix a little bit above mouthful. And there's the lamp. You know, yeah. Nobody's gonna die in there, but Eileen does manage to remove it. They're doing a good job of focusing down the immortality fields projectile. Super, somehow, unfortunately, he's just knocked out of position ever so slightly. The delay cost Violet his life, and Super not gonna get the support after that. That's it. They have to back off. Rascal is, what is his average right now? That is bonkers. 38 average? 
Yeah, 38 seconds average to get his ult online. The ult does charge fast, but Rascal's better at it than anybody so far as he tackles this new hero. Like I said, he's been known to pick up new heroes and master them immediately. He's just got, a, got the big brain on him. Well, okay, that charge, as far as they're concerned. Now they've got a couple online as well, so. And Eileen making his way towards the grab. Four minutes on the clock here for the San Francisco Shock to pick up the second point. Super just gonna throw it out. There's the big shatter. Two kills if they can get this done quick. Shoe hanging on. Barely, but real. You can't say the same for him. And now a golden opportunity for the Shock to get some real progress on the point. Uh, but just trying to buy some time before progress starts ticking in so his team can respawn. There should be at least a decent contest coming out now. They have to be smart like the Spark and not just go in one at a time. They have one concerted effort. Oh, 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 no. They run into each other. Super stops Rio from contesting. Oh, just the silent confidence. I'd be so tilted if I was one of that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even say anything. Just the silent fist bump. I knew yeah, I had it. There's no, there's no doubt in their minds, Hex, that this is going exactly the way it is meant to go. As far as the Shock are concerned, they are a winning team. It's the Charge who need to figure it out, get some of that confidence for themselves. We're going to be taking a quick break. When we come back, we'll see the second half of this second map in the series. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back from the break, everybody. Winning team on your screen right now, the San Francisco Shock in the lead and with the dominant performance on the second map here of this series. Just to remind you, we're looking for the first team to pick up three map wins. So they're looking good, fine form. The charge, however, the charge are the ones right now with their backs to the wall trying to figure a way out. Yeah, they, they are a little shorthanded too. I mentioned that Kib and Eileen generally play the same heroes. Eileen, I think, is the better Sombra. Kib's the better Brigida. They both have to play each. They're both in now because a player that I'm a big fan of, an all-star DPS player, Happy, is apparently feeling a little bit ill. Apparently a bit unhappy at the moment. <laughs> I see what you did. Oh, it was Kill terrible. Me, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna leave right now. Uh, but Please, I, think, I think it's one of the reasons that they can't play maybe a goofier DPS kind of thing that they right. can do. Because Happy would be your Widow, he'd be uh, all these kind of DPS aces. So right now the charge is forced to play San Francisco's game. And uh, it's not going great. That would explain it. That would explain it. It's a tough break. But, I mean, you're sick. You're sick. Yeah. Uh, unless you're Neptuno. <laughs> oh, no, Neptuno is just the <laughs> gutsiest player ever. Neptuno is like, I am on morphine right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, it hurts. Everything hurts, but by I like, must play for my team. By, like, stage four, it's going to be like an operating theater in the arena. He's going to be like, <laughs> ah, no, just get, just get my gallbladder removed. No worries. I, I can play. I can play coach. Put me in. <laughs> Put me in, coach. <laughs> Well, let's see now. It's going to be the San Francisco Shock on defense, the charge on offense, Rio kicking it off with the Widow, hoping that somebody's going to poke their nose around the corner to get it shot off. But 
doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Sinatra's on Sombra is something that he's added to his kit. Of course, uh, San Francisco Shock used to have an ace Sombra player, Dante. They traded him over to the Houston Outlaws, so Sinatra's had to pick up that mantle. Sinatra, when he plays other Sombras, crushes them because he's a Tracer main. He's been a Tracer main his whole life, so he's just got the tracking and aim to, to take them down. And he's been playing it really, really well. No surprises here from the charge offense. Just going to run very standard. Rio gets hacked. He's able to keep, stay alive, though. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Bionade's waiting. When you see him go purple like that, it means that they are no longer able to get healed. So that makes things a little bit tricky when you try and go for the push, but the charge do find their way through the initial choke point. Going for the wraparound. And once again, they just keep getting hit by these nades. Violet doing a good job of building that ult charge up to 56 already. And they just keep giving ground to Shock. They're waiting for somebody to overextend. Yeah, there's no reason to fight when you're not on the point. You just let the other team uh, try to make a make a move, maybe make a mistake. You get a hack off, you get a bash. Rascal's the first to fall, though. That's rough. They just get EMP online now. It'd be interesting to see if they want to... Yeah, they do. They go in. Oh, it was a huge hack, though. It got so many of the charge in it. And they capitalize. Moth finds a kill on Eileen. That's big. It's just like that. The San Francisco shot with the D-Mech on hot, but life's going to get tricky here for the charge. Yeah, just, well, I mean, somehow Kip just doesn't die. <laughs> It's Rio, the one actually making moves on the point, takes down both of the supports for the San Francisco Shock. So right now, I believe Charge is in a good position as long as Chara lives, he should be able to get back to his team. The walk back for defense a little bit longer. They pop the to rally. And now actually it's just gonna be reset time because with Violet dying, that'd be bad because, uh, you know, Anna's an old grandma and she's slow to the point. But Lucio died with her. A yeah. young, fresh uh, music aficionado can bring the rhythm and speed hey, back with them. So they get back to the point pretty quick. Yeah, just, well, that was also called the taxi service for that very reason. Hot buff, self-destruct online here and the charge trying to make their way together. They are sticking together. Rio not really overextending in any way. Charge oh, game, like, they have all the oh, ultimate wow. they need right now. It's a great that, sleep. Though. That's a great sleep from Violet. Rio taking a nap. He wants to get into it. Nope, gets hacked. No escape. Bionate on top. What can you do? Welcome to main tank and overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> that is so painful for Rio. Rio's just, I just want to play the game. Just let me play the game. The thing is, he's playing against the shock, and they're, all, they're just saying no fun allowed on this server. Yeah. Not while we're on it. No, when it happens to Super, like he's just got—it's got to be a cathartic feeling to see it happen to another tank. Oh, cool! We're gonna get to see that uh, that same trap here. Wait around the corner. They try and move through. Just bionate him. The charge had a huge ult advantage. Ah! Because of that last fight, they do not. Good job on Hotba and the charge checking corners. That's so important. That's so enormous. clever. That's enormous. That was Nano ready to go as well. Yeah. Now, like. Anna died alone. She's slow to get back to the point. Charge have a great chance to do this. They commit ults if they want. This is their only chance at the first point, so you might want to overcommit. Yeah, the shock, I mean, taking risks. Might be it, though. Super. Decides to go primal. It's going to make him tough to kill. Going to buy a bit of time. Whoa! Nobody was Hotpa. Hotpa going to be able to fly his way back onto the map. And somehow Super is still in this. He's got Choi there to back him up, but he is about to get deleted with no leap. He gets oh, he got Tano, too. That's not going to help things now for the San Francisco Shock. It's looking like they're going to get ferried off at this point. Another stun follow-up on Namath. He's gone, and yep, they have succeeded. Finally, in breaking the defense, the charge will pick up the first point, and they now have four minutes to get progress on the second, and they have a whole lot to work with here, Hex. Yeah, they are going to have a lesser time in their time bank unless they capture in the next eight seconds, which I do not see happening. Capture even takes that much longer. They've got a good snowball potential here because Super had to switch off. Sinatra still a little bit away from EMP, and they did not overcommit in that fight as far as ultimates go. They've got nearly five online. Kind of curious. I mean, we have the bubble up. Rio going to just go jumping in. Rio's got the primal, so he's, he can afford to take some risks. Yep, sure enough. There's the grab. Sinatra instantly removed, and we will have the self-destruct thrown over the top. Nice stun onto uh, Super. Drops that shield, makes him go boom with the bomb. Yeah, the grab just got super, but they're able to connect and finish. Uh, looking good, but so far the Shock are doing a good job of just trying to delay things. Not a single tick yet picked up. Although, as I say it, of course, the charge will deliver. EMP thrown out now, but the support is so good on the charge. Instant attention given to those focused. And Sinatra now 
Unfortunately for him, it doesn't really lead to a big play. The problem is it's taking too long. It's taking way too long for the charge to continue to get progress. He might be happy with two ticks. It's now San Francisco's in full force again. And Sinatra right now is just doing the best he can to farm that up. Get back to that EMP as quickly as possible. But the rest of his team doing work in the meantime, and they're getting picked off one after another on the charge side. So this yeah. that will finally be the end of that push. Kib gives up his life so that some others can retreat. I mean, otherwise they all get chased down on the retreat there. Everyone else went one way, Kib went the other on, you know, on your screen it looks like a mistake, but it's a, uh, Kib's gonna die. He doesn't have mobility. So he goes in forward, distracts them, allows his Winston to get out, and allows the other players to get out. Charge gonna come back in with a little over two minutes on the clock. They have Graviton, Rally, and Primal Rage, and Self-Destruct, see if they can set up a good combo here. And they should be able to get a good combo. There's no shields. Yeah. There's no shields for San Francisco as Super switched over to the Hammonds. Exactly right. So there is a window of opportunity here for the charge. They've got two minutes on the clock here to make it happen. Yeah, but they're all tick. Now they're playing spread out because they know this. They're, they're all over the place. The, char the shock are not grouped up at all. So you're going to have a hard time getting a huge value graviton and self destruct. In the meantime, Sinatra, yep, right there onto the EMP. This could they're really throw a wrench at things. And yep, sure enough, aggro EMP gets four hacks, five hacks, and that is going to be the end of this push. Surely for the charge. I mean, we do have Rio Gold for the Primal. Kim did not die in that somehow. The Trance comes out in the nick of time to keep him up, but the Sound Barrier used by Moth just to make sure that this fight is over and done with. So often we think about shields and bubbles as the counter to a self-destruct. You know what else is a counter? When your team gets grabbed, you EMP the D.Va so she can't self-destruct. What a helpless feeling that must have been, because it was a good grab. It got three people in it. But then the hack comes out, the EMP disables all abilities, and then Hoppa's standing there like a two-ton potato. <laughs> no chance to get a self-destruct in. Oh, that hurts. That's so brutal. 50 seconds on the clock for the charge. Still the self-destruct. Maybe he's just going to go ahead and use it as an opener here, truck it into the mix and see and hope. But nope, guess what? Another EMP. Another EMP on the line, and they're all going to die. One after the other, well, 35 seconds yeah. on the clock. At least they just ripped the Band-Aid off. They're trying to actually stall out the D.Va here on the right side. They do just that. 20 seconds left. So it could have gone worse. They could have taken 15 seconds longer before they got EMP'd there. At least now the charge should have. Super's going to have the minefield to put down right at yeah. the entrance. So, hey, you want to come through this door? I uh, hope you brought a sweeper. Um, and then there's just so much to work with here for the shock. So this is so tough, no matter how you cut it. Super in the back line right now, waiting. Gonna go in, there's the mines, everybody. Welcome party, and that's not the fun kind. Charge did manage to get into the background though, though, so that's gonna change things up a little bit here on the side of the charge, trying to pull somebody out here for the shock. But again, Super, just making it so difficult to get through this door. Self-destruct finds nothing. Transcendence gonna keep them alive and try to keep them in this fight. Everyone at full force, Rally now fades. Transcendence on the other side. No one yet to fall. No one even low. Uh, the grab gets thrown in by Eileen. That was perfect. And they take out Sinatra as well. Choi gets demeked. But without Sinatra, they're lacking the damage on the side of the shock. And this is going to make it very difficult now to find those kills. The charge did a great job of sticking together at the choke point. Oh, this is going to so a barrier and end up getting a couple too. Looked like a solo, but he actually caught Super and Rascal with that barrier. People are still falling. Ring around the Rosie with the Hammond on the statue. Another minefield. Uh, another minefield, but again, not the high value one that you're looking for here. Just gonna make it a little bit more difficult, but Super barely survives. Nope, never mind. Kip snipes him. And this has certainly gotta be it. Only a matter of time now as all of the ults come out here for the charge. And the shock finally gonna go down. Tying it up, 2-2. Two, two. Well, it was a great defense from the San Francisco Shock. Put it all the way into overtime. Time remaining for both teams now. Zero attempts for the Guangzhou Charge. They'll be playing for a draw as a best case scenario when we return after the break.
live to see what is going to happen here. Because the San Francisco Shock, they have three and a half minutes, more or less, to get some progress on this point. Yeah, that's why the defense is so important for San Francisco there, that it took the, the charge so long to capture. Since they captured in overtime, that's it. They're done with this map. That's as many points as they get, too. They don't get another shot at it. San Francisco, on the offense, now has three minutes and 43 seconds to get 33%, colloquially referred to as a tick. A tick of progress on the points. There's a ye little yellow arrow, you know, for, to, a little visual aid at home. They need to get the, the progress part of that arrow. Uh, stiff defense here from the charge, though. Not gonna get in for free here the Shock. They're still working their way, but they have to try and get through both of the tanks. It's looking like it's gonna happen. But Charo was up on high trying to knock him out of position. Nice bio nade there from Shu. Yeah, it, it does seem the Charger at least prepared for the Batiste, though. They've done a really good job focusing down these immortality fields. And it's, it's usually the first thing to die as soon as it goes down. They don't even bother shooting at everyone else, so. All right, so can they get a position here to take advantage of it? Char like, Rascal got slept there. That slowed things down just a little bit for the Shock. But now they once they We saw this the first time around. Shield goes down, hiding from the house, and now you gotta be real careful here with your ankles if you're the charge. No, but nobody's nobody. there to take yeah. advantage of it. No one's in the house. It's a distraction shield. Zoning shield. Zoning shield, yeah. They were trying to do it. They did that the first time around on offense. Yeah. It's actually not even a shield. I don't know. It's a matrix. An amplification matrix. Rio trying to get very angry here with the help of Anna. But on the point they are, the shock. And anybody going to be able to touch it? Time Hawk was a split second too late. And the shock is naked. Well. It does not end with a bang, but a whimper in the San Francisco Shock are speed running the Guangzhou Charge yet again. Up two maps as we go into the half. Brutal. <laughs> Brutal. We're taking a break and it's going into the halftime show. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile, and by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right. Haven't lost a single map in stage two. They're currently up 2-0 over the charge at the half. Welcome back into the Boys Arena. It's Bucket. We've got Zoe. We've got Bren. And again, this is the rematch. We saw it last week. Shock came out on top with the 4-0. And they're on track to do the same thing. But how do you guys feel early on 
what have you seen from the charge? Are you impressed? Actually, I am. That's the thing. Like, if you're playing against Shock, it is actually really hard to look good. And charge doesn't look bad. They're not playing bad. Yeah. It's just the Shock is so incredible yeah, good that's what it is. that they make everyone else kind of look, yeah. Like, Shock's playing at this level right here, yeah. and Charge is kind of here, and this is like the middle of the pack. You've got the, the big three at the top. We keep talking about them. Titans, New York, and Shock right up here. It's very difficult to, to look good against both of those, or all three of those teams, I should say. So, Charge, they're looking kind of middle of the packish right now. It doesn't look like it because it looks one-sided, but right. they're having moments of brilliance. And one of the key areas we wanted to focus on today was the healers. We wanted to look at the support players and not just healing from the support players so far <laughs> in this game. These Zenyatas are dishing out some damage, Zoe. They really are. And if we're comparing them league-wide, Violet is actually right up there in the top together with Twilight. Everyone thinks that Jonak is the deadliest Zenyatta in the league, but no more. Those two rookies are actually overtaking him right now in uh, terms of damage dealt in the match. And yeah. uh, we looked at Violet's stats early in our pre-show, and we saw Pretty that nice. he's leading the board. Now he's also ranked first in hero damage. He was on second this morning now he overtook twilight and it's insane it's actually insane yeah, that he's... he just comes up rolling on and then busts out uh three no four first places uh, out of 24 players in his league these numbers are ridiculous considering as well that he didn't play for i mean he didn't play for the first couple of matches for shock right the, the the point i'm making is as well the competition he's up against so much talent when it comes to zenyatta's in the league yeah. you got jonak twilight as well uh is yaki even though valiant haven't been performing well is yaki is a fantastic zenyatta player so he's got so much competition stacked against him but i 100 percent think as well that he is making a case for that rookie of the year kind the, of thing. The man's making plays today, oh, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. And we've been enamored with the shock supports all day long, to be honest, backstage. When the second map came around, we saw something unique from the shock. Not many teams are willing to take the gamble with Batiste on the attack. Yes, but this is one aspect of shock that I absolutely love about them, is that they don't try and ham fist these Batiste compositions. They only slot it in where it works. And they've they've oh. ran Rascal on the on the Batiste on, on their assault maps now. They run him on Anubis. They run him here as well, and they just kind of replace uh, Brigitte with him. They keep running the triple tank, triple support. I love this because a lot of teams, they, they play these completely different compositions, and you might be thinking, yeah, it's a little bit more variety, it's pretty good, but the reality is when you have to switch compositions going into the second point, you lose all your ultimates, all the progress you've made on them, and Shock are being very smart in keeping uh, just one player, just one player in particular, and using Baptiste where he works best. Very intelligent from them, and I think as well, you, you need to look at the coaching staff in particular that are making these decisions. Krusty as well, who's the head coach for this team, has made astounding progress in converting Shock into a top team. But you have to look at this. still has a shrine in his I really do. Yeah, I yeah. love Krusty so much. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a whole Krusty poster above the bed. We'll talk about that <laughs> later. Uh, for now, Brent, for anyone who wants to play Batiste after tonight's show, do you run it on just Paris? Any tips you can give them? I think if you are below diamond, you can probably run him in anything and it will still okay. work, honestly. Uh, these obviously pro players have to think a little bit more about how they're being ran because they are the best players in the world. But in general, you want to use them on maps of high ground. So like Temple of Anubis, fantastic for it. I guess Gibraltar as well, you can run him on it. You want to be making use of his exo boots if you can, you know, using them to jump up to the high ground and just kind of slam down from above one there. There you go. Final question for you, Soe. Right now, the Shock are unbeaten in stage two. They haven't dropped a map. Do they drop one today? I do not think they will. I'm sorry. I do think the charge look great. I do think they make it a close one, but as close as it gets, I don't actually think they're going to get a map because Shock, uh, as we, we talked about so often, they're not getting their foot off the gas. Like, they are not playing down yeah. to their opponent. If they see a weakness, they will abuse it. They will roll over it, and I expect nothing else from them today. All right, there you have it. The runners up from our Stage 1 playoffs. We'll find out. Can they take the top of the leaderboard here in Stage 2? That's coming up after the break. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
welcome back from the break, ladies and gentlemen. And well, Hex, the Shocker in the lead. Scoreboard right there, the timing is impeccable. But the Shocker in the lead, 2-0, and the Charge right now are still continuing the struggle. Doesn't look like we have any subs either, so in terms of like the game plan here for the Charge, what needs to happen? I think, I think you have to try something a little bit different. Maybe a Sombra comes into play, especially when the other team's running a Sombra, but that can be kind of difficult because Sinatra's really taken to the Sombra pick very, very well. Yes. But I, I just I, I really just do hold to the belief that if you're not one of the top three teams at 3-3, you can't beat a top three team at 3-3. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like They're just better at it. They're practiced at it. And I think everyone kind of knows that, so you have to throw them curveballs. But Sinatra's Sombra has been a, a revelation. I didn't even know he played this hero. When they played the Valiant, he rocked space three times in a row, got space, who was playing Sombra. Yeah. Like, obviously, a former Tracer Ace is going to be better than who, someone who's been relegated to D.Va duty on Sombra. The tracking was just sick. Space looked lost. And then, like, we, we mentioned it on broadcast, that EMP, after his team gets grabbed, they, they know the combo's coming. The, e, the, the grab comes down, catches three. Sinatra's like, hold on, um, I have a button here that just says, nah. And he hits yeah. you, and it, nah, you're not going to do that. And then the, the diva's sitting there like, I want to I wanna self-destruct. Nope. See you later. Back to spawn. And then they win Paris. So it, it's been really interesting that Sinatra came up in Overwatch as the, one of the best Tracer players in the world. In my opinion, he's still my favorite Tracer to watch because uh, he plays like an idiot. Now, I've told him this to his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he, he, he moves to Zarya and is the best Zarya in stage one. And now he's picked up a, a Sombra because his team needs it. And he's just, he's evolving as a player and he's been playing so much smarter lately too. It's just, it's a joy to watch. I mean, would you say that that's a big asset here for the Shock Effect that they got two players who can adapt on the fly? Rascal, Yeah. another guy who's able to pick up these heroes so, and make, so, make them sing. Yeah, so much so now that like, if, if San Francisco needs to run a Tracer, they'll probably put Striker in. Because Sinatra just hasn't played it as much lately and Striker, we've seen one of the best Tracers in the world. So why wouldn't you go let a guy specialize? Oh, here we go. Blizzard World will be the third map in this series, the hybrid map, second point here. So they'll be fighting over the first point, and they'll, they'll try to be pushing a payload all the way here, the final destination, third point of the map. So we'll see. San Francisco Shock will be on... I got distracted there by Zarya. She's as strong as a mountain, apparently. <laughs> so San Francisco Shock will be on offense and the charge on defense. Is she as strong as the mountain, though? No, that's that's, that's that. I don't know, but that would be terrible. Definitely couldn't show that on stream. <laughs> <laughs> So, getting into the action, getting into the thick of it. Let's see, the Shock Super just looks so relaxed right now. Just leaning back, taking it all in. Sykes smells. He can smell their fear. He's like, ah, yes. The rich bouquet. It's his, it's his nourishment. All right, well, Rascal on Batiste has been a familiar sight lately. He seems to really, really understand that hero greatly. No Brigida for them, though. Shu is going to have to play like that if the Charge want to get back into it. Just immediately wins the fight alone. We talked a little bit about Violet's tendency to peak sometimes, not understanding the uh, mercurial nature of Super Shield. Up or down, does its own thing, kind of. It's like a Doctor Strange's cape. It's kind of got a mind of its own. There you go. What a ref. <laughs> right, it'll save you, too. Flying out. Maybe not that, but uh, that is just the thing. Violet. You're gonna have to kind of play on your own, and well, shoot, you're right. So let's see, because he's already That's huge. I mean, it, it, he's already got the trance on line. Shoot, so. Like that one kill, there's a minute off the clock already. Yeah, it's it's how big those first kills are, and a lot of ult charge as well. Yeah, it's really the Zenyatas who were able because of the range. They have been able to farm up their ults, but apart from that, it is still the charge with a bit of an edge. Can't die yet though. Rio does survive. Shu decides to use the trance now, and guess who's grinning ear to ear? Sinatra, this sets it up for him. Yep, no hesitation on his side. Wonder where it went down, though. It didn't look like he managed to snag anybody in the trap. I uh, didn't see much going on there. They make exchanges, though. Super does go down. The Charger being pushed back, bullied back, as is the San Francisco way. Just kind of pushing them off the point, even without a main tank right now. So Charge need to get back on this point. They will do just that as Rio steps in. All right, Super's back in the mix, in the mix though, so. Two minutes on the clock here. Rascal's got the rally. As soon as Super is back in here, wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it. We start getting everybody into the fight. Sure enough, rally is there. Kib as well. Grab, attempt to shut him down, and Hoppa gonna get the lob over the top. Two kills there. Perfectly timed displacement. Super and Moth both go up in smoke, and it is going to be the San Francisco Shock getting sent back to spawn. Hotba's been so good for this team. I misspoke a little earlier, called him a former Shock. I got confused by the orange, of course. Former Fusion, Hotba. The veteran presence on this team, the leadership he provides. 
Let's see where this grab went, or more accurately, didn't go. Oh, the timing of it. So yeah. close. But you know, you don't know what that crate ever said about Sinatra, so you gotta get vengeance somehow. What a punk. <laughs> what a punk. Alright, getting into it now. Rascal gets low. He's now switched off of the Batiste onto Brigida. Another grab ready for Sinatra. I always tell you when he doesn't have grab. It seems like it'd be easier. No, yeah, again, he has it already. He's just so fast. What a shatter from Rio! Lays him out, but it's not gonna be enough. Self-destruct point blank, but they will survive it on the side of the charge. Gotta give Eileen a ton of credit there. A couple of bubbles saved his team. That's a big deal. And Super just with the straight up. It doesn't matter. even matter. They do manage to get him anyway. Got pushed off the point. So off the point means that the payload is now unlocked and the shock will be able to start pushing it forward. San Francisco are just so intimidating. Like even when they're standing there, you're just waiting. Like, oh, are they going to come at us? Are they going to come at us? Like, teams just back away from them constantly. The only team that really doesn't back away from San Francisco is Vancouver, because Vancouver plays the exact same style. And what a series that was. Stage one finals. Go back and watch them. So good. Not a lot of progress here so far for the Shock, but it is going to be now on to the charge. They have Rally online. Kip can use it to initiate for this next fight, and then they, there's no backing off. You gotta go in. They should win with this Graviton. There's not a whole lot to defend it. Mothwall of Soundberry, but you can't shoot through that. Violet's away from there. For incentives, excuse me. Now there it is. Rally comes out. Bonus armor being given. Chu gets a smidge of it. San Francisco appropriately backing off. Waiting to see how it pans out. This is, of course, giving Sinatra the time to work up to another grab, which he's got online already. Before Eileen is even thrown his in. Oh, Eileen, though, but there it is. Double it up. Self-destructs all over the place. Willy-nilly up against it. That is not going to be any kills for it. Another great play by Violet. Uses Transcendence and then tries to body block as much as that explosion as possible. Gets straight up in it. and Whatever the explosion can't see, it can't kill. So he's able to cover up. Kind of acts like a Zarya shield in that sense. Good play by Violet. Rio got to be careful here. Looking like he's going to be backing off, but Moth is looking to display some tries. Doesn't quite find it, but still, that's Rio hiding around the corner. Atma is going to take the brunt of the damage, and they are on it. Two points picked up for the Shock. Just like that, the pressure is monstrous on the charge. That's two points that have been picked up here on Blizzard World, where five members of the Guangzhou charge were alive whilst it was captured. That's passive play. That's what San Francisco is going to exploit all day. And you're seeing it here. I mean, Moth willing to make plays, getting in there, just the pressure. Like, Moth got in on Rio, and any other Lucio would have just stayed there and killed him. But he knows he already did his job and took him out of the fight. No need to even waste ammo on him, because Rio's not coming in anytime soon at 15% at health. So then Moth's like, oh, I got other stuff to do. Leaves him there to hide in his corner. Yep. What a shot of that time, Super Connect. Starts off the party here for his team. Eileen is gone, and so does Rio. They're all dropping in droves. The payload now going to get around the bend, and the charge just left to wonder how can they put a halt to this. The crazy thing is it's not even that one-sided when it comes to the kills. It's 12 for San Francisco, 8 for Guangzhou. That's not too bad. They're just getting mind-gamed off of these points somehow. Hit W. Let's go. Go fight. They haven't even done more damage. The charge have done more damage, but barely by a hair. And here it is. Sinatra sets it up, grabs all over the place. Follow-up is there as Sinatra gets eaten, so that's unfortunate for the yeah. shock. Not Up quite capitalized. Up again has a huge play. That's a hard thing to do. It's not easy to get top of Sinatra from getting those grabs going. Rio with the shatter. There it is, the good focus on the super. This is actually turning up a little bit of the heat on the shock, although they still get two kills despite it all. And that's enough of a ghost signal to get in there and take the fight with the sound barrier. Forces out the transcend at the very least as they come in. Charge should be able to get back in here and sound barrier. Keep them alive. Defender's advantage is still a thing, but Sinatra, grab ready. Yep, solo grab on Eileen. No fear. Straight in on it. Doesn't quite get that. Never mind. Moth is there. Moth gets the kill. Headshot on Eileen. Choi gets team X, but there's still an edge here. Without the Zarya, it's lacking the damage. Are the charge going to be able to hang in? They get shattered into oblivion. Shattered into the nether realm. There is no hope left for the charge. San Francisco will complete the map. And for moments there, it felt like they were playing with their food. That's exactly what it was. Eventually getting the job done on the charge. Perhaps a cursed charge there at the end saying, you know, 
and turning the screws on them. But we are going to be taking a break. And when we come back, we'll see how the charge fare on offense. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back from the break. Hoppa, man on your screen here. Playing the D.Va for the charge, one of the key roles. And he has succeeded yeah. in getting two of the ults so far, you know, of Sinatra. He's Not the, an easy thing to do. He's going to be the guy they have to lean on as someone who is a veteran of the Overwatch League. I know we're only two seasons in, but he has a whole season under his belt, has played with uh, the Philadelphia Fusion before. Came in later in the season, really reinvigorated that team when Hoppa and Sato came in as their tank pair. And he's had a good performance so far, but they need to lean on him as far as just calmness. Let's play our game plan. Let's not panic. They need to get their confidence back. And you have to start small. Let's eat an ult. Let's win a fight. Let's win this point, right? Move, build small right now, because it seems like they're overwhelmed and they're they're playing a little bit passive, which is a death knell against San Francisco. You can't play passive. They're not going to let you. It is a good point to make. In terms of confidence, that's what's the shock. No, they're going to be able to keep pressing you back, yeah. pressing you back, because they're not afraid. They're not the ones who are afraid. They have the confidence to yeah. that they're going to win this. And it's by a small margin, but the Guangzhou Charge is the youngest team in the league. The average age is about 21. Uh, the Guangzhou Charge average age is about 20, which may not seem like a lot, but in maturity and esports-wise, it actually is a pretty big gulf. Oh, let's see. How will they fare on the offense? Now that they're going to get the chance to show us what they're capable of. The shock on defense, charge on offense, and well, Already with the setup, just initially here, taking a gander out. TP up, there you go. Rio's gonna get the spot, everything out. Eileen as well, and now we'll have the wholesale changes that come rolling through. Kib onto the Brigida. 3-3. Three, three. Three, Rascal three. on Batiste on defense. So apparently you can say Baptiste or Batiste. That comes straight from the voice actor himself, so have fun. Choose your own adventure when it comes to playing. He'll <laughs> 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 get it, he'll get it. Baptiste, I guess. I, I, I was wondering as well, Baptiste in French. You know, you can say it yeah. in different ways. Uh, depends on your reason, like where you're coming from. So. Exactly. So it's supposed to be like Haitian Creole. So yeah, who knows? Regardless, I'm just going to call it the rascal from now on. He's been crushing on this hero. We had this exact same debate with Brigida, right? Like, you, you, yeah, you I, know, I, I, I still love that. Let's go on and on. But it is going to be the charge, just living up to their name, trying to power through, trying to take the fight to the shock here. Yeah, they made a full rotation. It is Hoppa who draws first blood on his opposing number. So he'll have been out of mech. Oh, there you go. That's going to keep things spicy. No Choi here to back things up. The charge trying to press it. A lot of healing comes in from Rascal there. That's healing over time as well. Huge shatter from yeah, Super. Super just lays him out. They're right in front, but Sinatra not able to get the follow up. They have to make use of the barrier, but they don't even need it, turns out. Nobody on the shock dying. Perfect use of Bastiste. That's a hold on the shock side. Not even a single take of progress made for the charge. I like that the immortality field actually has Rascal's number on it when he puts it down. So like all the Overwatch players have numbers. You can see next to their name right now, Rascal's 27. 
the lamp aspect of the immortality field actually has a 27 next to it when he puts uh -huh. it down. Attention to detail, that's what makes Blizzard games so great. The polish, the Blizzard polish. I'm just wondering, where's the, where's the, how, where's the two, where's the three? Charge have got a zero on Eileen and a one on Shu, so you I mean, why wouldn't you just keep it going at that point? All right, Eileen, speak of the devil, he's got the grab. This is the opportunity now to overwhelm this defense. Could take advantage of the high ground here, and it's looking like that is part of the plan. Puts Eileen in a nice spot. Comfy gets the rain in nades. Yeah, Violet's got his transcendence ready though for any incoming graviton surge. There it is. Uh, Jumps right in. Throw it in. Great All brought in. in. Ooh, okay. Well, that's that's only the field. That's only the lamp that gets killed. Yeah, but that's what that is so powerful to do right there. Even if there's no shields at all, they would all have lived. It would only have killed the immortality field. That's the the utility that Batiste provides. Yes, exactly. So the wombo combo, not so wombo anymore. I lead. Laid out. And that is going to be the end of it here. They just go charging off the side into the depths. One minute remains, one minute on the clock, ladies and gentlemen, for the Guangzhou charge to make any sort of progress. Otherwise, they will drop map three, go down 3-0, and effectively lose the series. Last chance to salvage some hope for Guangzhou. They don't have any offensive ultimates. Might be time to just initiate with a sound barrier, hope for the best, maybe live through yet another Sinatra Graviton surge. Exactly, at least they do have Shu to counteract that uh, grab. Shu needs to survive though. Looks like he got clipped there for a second. Has to be careful. Oh yeah, sure enough, Sinatra. Yep, just throws it out there. Just throws it out there. No hesitation. Forces the trance out on Shu's side. Now Rascal's gonna set up the damage boost. And the charge, if you face this, you're gonna get melted. They had a self-destruct. They didn't even go for it. Maybe it's a last second clear out attempt, but Choi Hoban just held on to it. I think he's just gonna plop it down on the point. Like here, you're gonna have to deal with yeah. this. Alt advantage still and pretty I, firmly. More alt ready for Sensei This has to be the best grab we've seen from the charge all day. Yep, there it is. He catches the one. Eileen Solid. goes both though, and we will lose Rascal. There is that. Violet still holding on to his transcendence. I, I just stand corrected on that self-destruct. They're using it defensively so that when they do get grabbed, they launch it up there. That way you can't just walk up and beam down the yeah. grab pile of bodies. No one able to do follow-up damage. That rally is the last cry of the charge as they get pushed off of Blizzard World. San Francisco Shock 3-0 will effectively win the series. Now, locking it down in fine form, and they really do look, you know, business as usual. This is when you're dealing with the elite in the league, what they're capable of, as clean as it gets, Hex. We're taking a break, and we'll see map four after that. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Shock. I'm like, wait, we won? Look at Super. Yeah. 
They're just leering out in the audience. Yeah, they got the job done. So, 3-0 victory for the Shock, but we do play out the fourth map for the, play right. the uh, stage playoffs. And, well, map differential for the playoffs. The one thing that really separates the Shock from Vancouver and from New York is they don't take map four off. Because if you take map four off, it takes longer. And they're done with it, right? They've already won. They're, they're trying to eject the other team from the server as quickly as possible. It's got text we have in the oven waiting for you. Yeah, at look, Come on. look guys, we won. We're the better team. They just get off our map, please. <laughs> Whereas New York is like, hey, maybe we'll try this new style and we'll do this. And Vancouver's just like, I don't know what's real, so uh, put him, put Bumper on fire or whatever. <laughs> Shock's just like, I want to go home, right? Did we do our job today? Time to go home. So the San Francisco Shock don't really mail in map fours, which is, uh, you know, unique to see at the very, very top of the league. Also, it's going to really set them up for map differential going forward because That's they are so the close you know, to these if, teams. If you focus in on it, and this perhaps has something to do with the co with the coaching staff, you know, keeping a tight rein on things. Like, listen, guys, if it comes down to it in the end, I'm sure we're at the top of the stage, mm -hmm. but it's, it's to determine seeding, et cetera, for the playoffs, every map matters. So you got to take yeah. it seriously here. Well, also, if you're at the very we'll top and you have map differential, there's also scenarios in which, like, you can control who you play by losing a game on purpose or something. That you can control who you get to have an, as an opponent in some sort of playoff situation. So you give yourself that leeway by crushing teams 4-0. Oh. Ah, Rascal on the Batiste. It becomes synonymous at this point. American lift right on up, no problem at all. That vertical game possible for Batiste. And well, just going right on through the charge waiting. Which way are they dropping? Is it going to be Rio down here? Yep, Rio through the back, managing to leap out. And right now, the charges feel like they're, they're trying to figure out where where are we going to take this fight, boys? Where where do we go ahead and take the fight? Well, you'd like to just do drop down rotations with your vertical tanks. You want your Winston jumping down, jumping back up, then your Diva jumping down, jumping back up, and try to prevent progress. But that payload is not stop moving. Uh, that payload is, I mean, okay, now here at the point, they are going to decide. Now's the time because there's no backing off from here. You're going to have to take this fight. Rio, Rascal's still got working on it. Yeah, he's got the he's got the window already, so. Amplification matrix amplifies healing, amplifies damage. It's the window pane of pain. Looks pretty cool, too. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Not Only lasts always. eight seconds, so the super fast charge rate is balanced by its very short duration. Exactly. It's a no window. It's a window of opportunity there. Well, Grav is there. Sinatra, no shock there. You know, there's going to be a bunch of kills for the shock. Charge. The immortality field lives long. There, Rascal, sliver of life, stays alive. First point captured, San Francisco. Hello and me, Sinatra. Hello. Super. There, there's. So, I don't mind it on the Zarya. He used to have it bound to, like, attack on Tracer. And so it used to just be Sinatra saying Haya constantly. Uh -huh. Which, uh, even not playing against him, tilts me off the face of the planet. So I can't imagine what it's like. And he's just dominating you on Tracer. And just, Haya! Haya! Uh, the, oh! Grab thrown in. I lead. Decides. Time to take the fight. They do a good job taking out the Matrix first. Now there are vulnerabilities. Super's first to fall. They do trade out main tanks. Uh, trading one for one, but that's just only going to favor the shock. Plenty of energy on Sinatra to do some damage. This, this payload continues to make progress. It's going to finally be Kip. Deciding enough is enough. Goes ahead, commits, and then they're more than happy to back off the shock. They're getting more and more ahead on the ults. There's a rally that was used to little benefit. But we paint them as an ultra-aggressive team, and they are, but they, they do know when to leave. They, they're only going to be aggressive when they have the advantage. Another ultimate up from Rascal. Amplification Matrix down. Right clicks will be amped through. Left click does not for Zarya. Projectiles mostly, bullets as well, but not beam weapons. self destructs are going in, but hey, there it is. Sound barrier in the nick of time. May only be delaying the inevitable here, though. Kiv still getting focused, but it looks like they are able to back off and reset the shock. They just keep baiting these ultimates out. Great, we'll just wait until they wear off. We're not going to give you a kill. We'll wait. We'll just Back wait, off and we'll then wait the 10 go. seconds until we have another amplification matrix. There's one again. Ooh, oh, there we go, Shu. That's what's got to happen. A couple of headshots there, and then he gets the follow up to set it up for Kib. Excellent work. He's just hitting headshot after headshot right now. He says, Your matrix is a clutch, or a crutch rather. I'm the clutch. Hits the shots and will be able to keep his team in it. Charge, signs of life here. Yeah, I mentioned that it, it, they're gonna be able to hang with them. It's gotta be Shu, it's gotta be Hot, but normally I'd put Happy into that mix too. 
as some of the standout all-star heroes on Guangzhou. But they, they've really solidified this defense on second point. It also doesn't hurt that second point Gibraltar is one of the hardest offensive parts of any map to push. Because look at the, the automatic high ground the defense gets. It's a little bit insane. Well, eventually, they're going to have to be able to... Oh, that's unfortunate for Rio. Dropping onto low ground. Going to have to just set up shop and hope that his team can support him. Wants oh. to get in there. Kib with the rally. Kib's going to rally. San Francisco's just going to leave. Shatter was just thrown out there. Super hoping for something. That wasn't quite it. Rio's got a shatter of his own still online. And the charge are succeeding at slowing down the shock. They're making them work for it. Hasn't been as one-sided so far. Sinatra, though, there's the grabs. Fully charged up. And let's see who's going to come out ahead after this one. Sound barrier goes down. Shields are up. Choi getting topped up immediately by Violet. A very, very low right there. Now all ults expended. The later sound barrier for charge should give them the advantage to push forward on this. And they sound barrier and then kind of just back out again. Focus fire too good to feel the heat right now. Rally comes online in the nick of time for Kim, and it's just barely gonna keep him alive. And Rio's dead. Kim follows Eileen hanging on by a thread. This is the chance now for the shock to press on through, and it's looking like they'll succeed in doing just that. Second point picked up for the shock. And now we get to see are they capable of getting it home to third? They will get it. Had to toss in nearly everything that they had, but Snotra at 76% will have a grab by the end of the next fight. Getting those grabs about 1 minute 17 seconds, actually being outpaced by Eileen right now. Eileen's getting them, well, 109, so pretty close. Usually we see Sinatra below a minute though. Oh, the shots. Uh, Shock just gonna take a forward position. Probably won't retreat too much further in this corner, considering the ground they've already gained. So one last push in to the home stretch for the Shock. But just go barreling through, Eileen's got the grab. But we're watching for him and Sinatra as well. So far, they've done a good job trading back and forth. But the oh. fade away from Eileen gets sniped by Violet. No he possible follow-up. So follow low. He was so low. It felt like he was forced into it, had no choice. Uh, and now the door is locked on this side. The rest of his team should probably be going to the other side. At this point, lock that door as well. Bring him in. And that's the entire time. The payload it doesn't stop. Yeah. There you have it. Perfectly timed grab, no way to contest. It's a lockout ultimate indeed, and the San Francisco Shock will finish Gibraltar. Minute 55 on the clock as well, so solid work Yeah, the Shock. I mean, the Guangzhou was a speed bump there for a little bit on second point. They, they had a couple of decent fights. I think you know, Shu did his best, had some good fights there. But overall, they're just given a long enough timeline, the Shock's going to wear you down and win. Uh, check the, sh the suspension, you know, that was fine. Yeah. Brakes, good. Didn't have to go ahead and refill the tires. It's all fine, heck. All fine and dandy because the shock right now are sitting on three points and we will not be taking a break. We're going to be sticking with it and the charge are now the ones. <laughs> they just look so bored. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I really hope that the charge aren't looking over because I swear to God they would tilt me off the face of the planet. They don't even care. They don't even care that they're beating you this bad. <laughs> oh, it's rough. Uh, look, I had really high hopes for the charge coming into the season. I, I looked at this roster. I liked how they put it together. They played some really tight games early, had a bad draw in Vancouver. By no means do we really, really know what the charge are. They've had four matches against the top two teams in two stages. That's unfair. That's uncool, man. If they can just weather that storm and kind of put it together after this, then I think we'll start to figure out who the charge really are. But two matches against San Francisco, two matches against Vancouver, as Super would say, we don't take that seriously. We don't take that seriously. You just kind of have to rub those off. It doesn't matter. Uh, exactly. That's the thing. It's a measure of... It's an ability to measure yourself up against the, the best right now, the elite. Right. So that is, there is value but look, in getting your, your head no, counter. But look, no one looks good against these teams right now. So it doesn't really matter. Exactly. So now it's on the charge, but early contest here from the Shock. Not going to let him get much progress here, at least at the start, it seems. The Shock intent on taking the fight. Shu trying to find an angle here. Hoping that Super would overextend, but Super actually showing some real pace there, not actually going out of his way. That's been the most impressive thing throughout the season from Super and Sinatra, mostly Sinatra though, is that they're not making over-aggressive mistakes. They've actually tempered it down. 
Um, when it's time to go, they go, but they've also realized that it's not always time to go. Yeah. Just 90% of the time, it's time to go. But you got the confidence. Oh, okay, change of angle here from the charge. Around the back, and let's see, does this work for him? Could force the shock into an awkward spot, but they are doing a good job of hanging far back here on the shock side of things. Violet working his way up to the trance. Just flinging orbs. Yeah, shoes there as well. Yeah, these long distance poke battles, the Zens are always going to get there. Eileen outpacing Sinatra as well momentarily. Oh, Kib, you gotta be careful. So there. low. Kib, so low. Sinatra not quite there with the fall. You're, you're taking the high pile you target there. You're, you're eliminating yeah. Rio, and that's gonna be it. But that's what happens when anyone goes low. The resources have to be dedicated towards them instead of someone else. And then he can target someone else. And Rio starts going low. All the resources have just gone into Kib. He has Orb on him. Very likely, just the healing amp probably went up as well. Not enough to keep Rio alive, so that damage is a domino effect. One person getting hurt on an Overwatch team affects everybody. And this is something right here. Look at this. Yeah. Not every day you get to see this on Gibraltar. The spawn yeah. camp. It's kind of what San Francisco does. Uh, it's how they play. This is the style of their players. Nothing for free. You get nothing for free. You Good day, sir. It. You gotta yeah. earn the respect. You get nothing. Well, oh, rallies in. Both teams getting armor, both Rio, teams, but Rio gets so hit. And it, and it just cuts him off from the front line. It doesn't stop him from swinging that hammer and getting into this fight. So Rascal on zero, let's see. Do we get any follow-up here? What is next in the combo? Okay. Fair enough. Sinatra showing that you know, he's not going to super patient. Gonna throw it out there. Yep, sure enough, but now do they get the follow-up? There's a trance over the top. Char is trying to back cap. Yeah, Kib is also going to get blocks, though. Moth and Chara fight it. The fight for the ages. Yes, because it lasts. It's a dance-off. It's breaking three. And back to the door. San Francisco holds. Minute 60 seconds remain for a Guangzhou charge to leave their spawn. Minute on the clock. Eileen, I'm just trying to keep an eye on the players right now because there isn't a whole lot of talking. Rio's doing a bit of the chat right now, trying to get everybody rallied up, it seems, but... Uh, I see a whole lot of top of heads as the heads hang low here. Yeah. On the side of the shot, there's confidence. <laughs> I've never seen a person more relaxed than Super. He's just leaning back. He's really yeah. leaning back. Can we get that man a marker lounger? Oh, sorry, that's a brand name. A recliner. A recliner, there you go. Rio. Looking at it, there was actually like a CS player who did that, the JDM. Yeah. The sport, just way leaning back. Total relaxation. Uh, grabs up for Sinatra. Grab is thrown in for Sinatra. Self-destruct tries to do something here. Does get Maw, who is on payload protection duty. Payload's not enough to save him. I mean, they've been winning, what, 5v6 anyway without Moth? Without Moth here is going to make that big of a difference. Yeah, they just threw everything in. They do get grabbed. This might be time for the charge to get something. But somehow Chara goes down. It's 5v5. Shatter comes in. Doesn't find anything. No way. Sinatra survives. Sinatra survives that somehow. Hot by you dead. Get out. And there you have it. The shock. Commanding victory over the charge. 4-0. As clean as it gets. I think the thing I respect most about them is how they treat map fours. When they were up 3-0, it's like, you know what would be cooler than beating someone 3-0? 4-0 in the most humiliating <laughs> fashion possible. How's that? Uh, it's just, I mean, that is it's a statement of will. Oh, it's a shock. It got such a, got it. such a swagger about him. I love it. How can, you, how can you not get into this team? Yeah. What a fantastic play. And so, the shock. Get the job done. Not shocking anyone. At least the charge. Still back to uh, the work. Hoping to see some improvement, you know, from Hoppa, from Shu. Yeah. I have seen star level play out of Shu in particular. I'd have to check with people with better mind for numbers than myself, but I believe they've lost 19 maps in a row now, the charge. I don't know, Matt. Matt Matt's looking away right now. Mr. Knight's like, I don't, I'm not going on that. <laughs> You're on your own, Hex. You're on your own. I, it's something like that. It's close enough. Give, give or take two or three maps. I'm pretty sure it's 19, because I think pregame said 15. And they just lost four more maps in a row. Ooh, that's right. I mean, you, you, you have to start aiming for small victories at this point. Winning a map and just building off of that, right? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how you fix this right now. It doesn't help that Happy's out and you, you don't have the versatility that he provides. So, 
look at a bit of the highlights here. This was the one where it seemed like the, sh the Charge were able to put up a little bit of a fight versus the Shock. Yeah, and Moth has been doing this to people all day. Gets himself in great position. The highlight reel is going to look like Super Headed Enormous Shatter. The only reason he was able to do that is Moth comes down from his perch, flips away Rio, no shield in the way. They just, the coordination for this team is just, they don't even have to talk about it, really. Like, a lot of these guys have been playing together so long now. Remember, Sinatra and Super came in halfway through last year, and they've just grown as a team. This is always the plan. Well, they are like the, they are the unicorn, right? The team that says, oh, no, we're planning for the future. Yeah. Right? All throughout last season, we're planning for the future. We will have our time. Everything's going to pan out and work. And sure enough, I mean, lots of bumps in the road for this team, but now we're starting to see that hard work pay off. Yeah, but I mean, you also think about it. They had time to, you know, get acclimated to the team, get used to Los Angeles, a new living environment before you even turn 18, you know? Then you move out here and you start like, everything just becomes a workplace then because you've been here for so long. Granted, they're only 18 and 19 now, but they're veterans of the Overwatch League at some point. You're seeing that kind of game sense and that knowledge pan out. And I think the coaching cannot be overlooked here. They, they've all received coaching and gotten better and better as the stage goes on. And what's that if not just great coaching and good organizational structure? Was it the Church of Krusty? The Church of Krusty, yes. Right. The Church of the Church of Blank has been overused, but uh, there you have Krusty it. wasn't one of the four. Uh, let's four. go ahead and take out our look at our player of the match, the MVP. Yeah. Open by HP. We'll pick a name out of the hat if you want for the San Francisco Shock. They've all been playing out of their mind, but let's give a little dap to the rookie Zenyatta in Violet. He had himself an enormous game. He leads the league in so many Zenyatta stats. He's cleaned up some of the airs. He knows that Super Shield is not to be relied upon most of the time, so he's not peeking the corners. And he's just hitting shots. He's getting transcendence up enormous amount of times. You could talk about anyone you want on this team. We just happened to pick Violet today because uh, you know, I like how he spells his name. I mean, he's the average. I want to see the average. Oh, no, we're not going to get that, unfortunately. But I think he was maintaining on most of those maps like a 50 cent, 50 second average on trans. Yeah, it was it was, it was was pretty bonkers. Uh, just he's getting poke war wins. He's hitting headshots. And, and on the other side, Shu is one of the most deadly anti-Zen Zens in the game. Right. He has super high stats about being able to pick off the other Zen. And Violet didn't really fall victim to that too often. I think once or twice, maybe. But Violet's our player of the match. Pardon me? Violet's our player of the match. No, there we have it. Yeah, someone was in your ear. Yeah, sorry. I had to, <laughs> sometimes they just, you know, yeah, there I, mean, and... I mean, there's generally voices in your head anyway, but that one, that one I heard too. See, this and one I, I have consider, to listen to, though. You know, I this, can, yes. This is the one I actually have to listen I to. I consider myself sane. Um, what is insane is the next match that we have. It's called a segue. <laughs> <laughs> Chengdu Hunters versus the Shanghai Dragons. Oh, it's going to be bonkers. It's going to be like fun. That. I'm I a little like bummed that. we don't get Chengdu, but I'm going to sit in the arena and I'm going to watch yeah. Chengdu in Shanghai. This Chengdu Overwatch is entertaining Overwatch. You won't want to miss it. It's coming up after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. Hello foodies, welcome to the Chengdu Cook-Off. If you didn't know it already, Chengdu is one of China's food capitals. I thought I would put the hunter skills to the test. So here I'll have Aemong and Jinmu each cook one Chengdu dish. And at the end, we're gonna have their teammates decide who was the better cook. 15 minutes on the clock, your time starts right now. Jinmu, what are you doing? Mapo tofu. 成都风味的菜一般都有什么特点呢比较麻辣但是它的麻辣是好吃的那种麻辣金木里的麻婆豆腐做的怎么样啊看样子应该是快好了吧味道不错好香这是我给三位裁判做的麻婆豆腐请大
。就西红柿炒鸡蛋、炒西红柿的时候，要把西红柿炒软一点，这样炒出来的西红柿炒鸡蛋会更好吃。希望三位评委够够味。好，那就开始吧。这样吗？就不客气了。还行啊。这个就是呃，没有那么甜，就是我喜欢吃甜一点的。啊。然后就七分吧。感觉味道很淡，感觉西红柿的味道很淡。我比较喜欢吃西红柿浓一点的味道，六分吧。我觉得对我来说还不错哎，就口味还是有对到我的味，我觉得蛮甜的，我也给八分吧。Well, thank you both for participating in the Chengdu cook-off. How was it cooking for your teammates? 感觉当他们的保姆了，给他们做饭，感觉。很开心吧，因为平时就没有机会做过饭。Jimmu, you made an amazing mapo tofu, and your final score was 15. 挺多的啦。Amon came in like a wrecking ball and scored 21 points. Easy club. 